Someone had asked me a little while back about Star Trek action figures, and I don't have a bunch. In fact, I think these are, I think these are probably the only two I have left. So these were made by Playmates back in the '90s, 2000s, <clears throat> and yeah, they were mostly they were in this scale, which is sort of. It's sort of like a four inch scale, a little bit larger than three and three quarter inch figures. And um, the, well, I mean, you can see for yourself. They were okay, you know, for the time. This line was expansive. They made a bunch of these toys uh, covering, I think, all the different series that had come out. I mean, it wasn't through Voyager. This line stopped before Enterprise, but it did it did reach into Voyager. Uh, so yeah, just a ton of figures. The proportions were a little odd. They were pre-posed, so you can kind of see like on this foot, like he can't stand up completely straight. He is built and posed to stand, you know, with basically like with one foot forward and one foot back. I mean, he does stand, and then obviously like extreme posing, you know, one hand to hold a phaser, the other hand in this like, watch out pose. And then again, like putting the arms straight down, like this arm is permanently at an angle, but you know, so that he can do that. And then just some, just like weird joint things. It was, it was, you know, for its time, it was good. And like I said, this line, there were a ton. I should look up and see exactly how many figures, but... Oh, he's he is so sassy. But yeah, this line was... It was very popular for a long time. You can still find a ton of these figures out there because they made so many of them. And again, yeah, so this was, this was my battle-damaged Riker. Of course, there were standard versions as well. I mean, they did these characters in... Yeah, one-handed push-ups, he... He needs a little bit of help, but yeah, he can practically do it. All the main characters they made in their standard uniform in Battle Damaged. In uh, This line was very famous for its transporter effects. So they would have figures that were halfway translucent and then like speckled. And then there, was a, there were transporter play sets. <clears throat> they did them in their dress uniforms. Um... It, whenever whenever they were in disguises as other aliens, just tons and tons. So, I mean, you could, if you had a, a, a main character that you liked, you could collect just a bunch of different versions of that character. At one point, I like I said, I had more of these, and I think I had, I think I had one of the, did I have like a ship, like a, I may have had a shuttle, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so kept it Riker. And then, as I talked about, they, they made a few figures in this larger, kind of goofier scale. But um, Q was my dad's favorite character. And so actually I got this for my dad many, many years ago uh, to be in his office. This toy came out in 1995 per the bottom of his foot. And it talks. There's a button on the back and a little speaker. What a pity. Human. Bonjour, mon capitaine. Not sure how well that's coming through. <laughs> it's it's not very loud. What a pity. What a pity. Human. Human. Bonjour, mon capitaine. And bonjour, mon capitaine. Still works. Original batteries <laughs> from 1995. Uh, I should probably open that up one day and make sure there's not a bunch of battery acid in there. But yeah. So, that's the extent of the Star Trek Playmates toys that I still have. Obviously, I have hundreds and hundreds of Star Trek spaceships in various size, scales, colors, companies, etc. And then I have a handful of, where are they? I have a handful of the larger scale 
figures that they made for the Enterprise show. I had opened up a, a to Paul on a Toy Tuesday once. I'm not sure exactly where those are. Eh, whatever. What? Whatever. What's a pity? <laughs> Somebody needs to go poop. All right. So what's the headliner for today? As promised. Well, let's open up this thing. <clears throat> this is not our first foray into Mattel's now defunct DC Comics multiverse line. Now, typically, Clayface hype. That's right. Get hyped for Clayface. Uh, typically, this line consisted of four-inch action figures. <laughs> four-inch action figures. Uh, they did a couple of these larger scale sets. Uh, we actually opened one of these that had Solomon Grundy in it several months ago. Uh, and I'll show him in just a second. So a lot of th this line, while technically it was the multiverse line, hey Patty, and MXA Ghost, and anybody else who's watching, uh, they this line spent a lot of time on Batman. Batman is a perennial bestseller, no matter what kind of product you're talking about. So for every game, there were Batman specific figures. They just did a bunch of Batman figures. We've talked about this. We've looked at them before. So this is specifically Batman Arkham City, the video game. No. <laughs> Patty, because you are always exactly right on time. Batman vs. Clayface includes jail cell and base. We've got a weird picture of one of the Batman skins from the game. I can only assume because it looks so weird. And then a truly horrific picture of Clayface on this side. I don't want to see that guy's crotch. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, and then on the back, we get a little bit of how you can do the action. And then it says... Oh, we get... Okay. All right. Batman. Real name, Bruce Wayne. <gasps> Occupation, vigilante. Weapon of choice, utility belt. Clayface. Real name, Basil Carlo. Occupation, professional criminal. Abilities, the ability to morph into whomever he chooses. Kind of redundant abilities, the ability. Um, okay. And then we get a little action scene. Always note the warning. Small parts may be generated. If you break your toy, it could be small and you might swallow it. Uh, you can actually connect all three of these larger scale figures. I know, right, Arsenal He's an actor. Such a good actor. Uh, I have Solomon Grundy. I never did pick up this Killer Croc set. Uh, I didn't really like the look of that toy so much. All right, let's open this thing up. Now, there have been a few, a few Clayface toys over the years. Not a ton of them. Clayface is one of those characters that toy companies always seem to have trouble with deciding how they want to, how they want to tackle him. You know, typically in the cartoons or the comic books, he's large scale, but not super gigantic. Um, his proportions are usually really crazy. If you're going to make him in a toy, how do you handle, like, his limb extensions or his transforming? And I think that, I think toy companies will often get, sort of get ahead of themselves trying to figure out how to do a good toy of him. All right, noise. Come right back, man. Okay. Our goofy jail cell. Oh, it's attached. Okay. There we go. Oh, 
Nice. <laughs> Alright, let's get all this crap out of the way. Alright, let's check in on Batman. So this is one of the standard Batman figures from this line. Now, unfortunately, the colors are the colors are good, right? Uh, this one has a paint splash on his face dripping down over his nose, or past his nose. So that's unfortunate. Um, I can repaint his face at some point and get rid of that. But what are you going to do? This one has... I remember when we looked at these, there were a few different versions of this figure. Let's see if it's the same as this one. Okay, so not entirely the same. Different utility belt. But is everything else the same? Looks like it. Now sometimes what happens is they will you reuse a mold, right? Got to reuse our molds endlessly. Here it is. Um, but over time, molds degrade. They don't last forever. Even though... Uh, they cost tens of thousands of dollars to produce, and they are these giant chunks of metal. Uh, you can only use them so many times. So sometimes in a line of toys, you'll see, uh, typically it's over many years or many, like, essentially generations of toys, that the, like, the tolerances of joints will get worse over time, or some detail will be lost. Like, you'll see, and this isn't a great example, but... Like, you might see at the beginning of a line, you see these lines in the chest. Like, those will be pretty well-defined, but then 10 years later, they'll make the same toy from the same mold, and, like, those lines will be a lot softer. You won't even really be able to see them very much. So sometimes there is uh, mold degradation. But again, usually that's over a bunch of years. Sometimes they just use cheaper plastic, <laughs> and then it doesn't look quite as crisp. But yeah, there we have two. And again, I assume these are different skins from the game. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't play video games. All right, well let's get to the big guy himself. Here is Clayface. He's a big chonker. He actually has a lot of articulation, which is nice. You can really get him. Yeah, Aerodens, you can you can definitely do different versions. Yeah, sometimes they they'll care more or less if a mold is is changing over time. I know obviously this is based on a specific appearance, but I do kind of wish they had an alternate head that you can swap out. I mean, again, I I this one is fine, I guess, but it's so tiny. And it's so weird looking. If they'd just given us... If we could pop off and you could have a, another clay face head. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for the resubscription. I know. I, I just... I don't play video games. That's why I have to laugh at like these people getting upset about the hot tub streamers. I'm like, that's not video game content. They shouldn't be on here. It's like, well, if you're banning video game... Non-video game content, I guess I'm out. See ya. Uh, Arsenal Roy, did they ever make a figure of the clay face that had a dome over his head? Um, oh, the actual, uh, like, uh, like the ultimate version kind of thing? I don't, I don't think so. I tell you, I play, I play one video game. It's a game that's on my Kindle Fire, and it's that, um, that nonogram not a grams game, but it is technically a video game. So yeah, this thing is is huge. Ooh, he's got a big butt. Good articulation, especially for a figure this size. Uh, because he's so heavy, he is actually... I'm sure I'll be able to 
get him to stand in a variety of poses, which is cool. Nice threatening poses. And then he does have, which hand is it? Is it this one? So that hand pops off and you can stick on this gigantic meaty clay hammer fist thing for more smashing capabilities. Overall, I like this one. Yeah, it's mainly just the head thing I don't I don't love. Oh, that is. Now another thing that that frequently happens with clay face toys is, um, well, frankly, they look like poop. <laughs> it's the color, it's the texture. <laughs> That's how it looks next to other figures. And there's... Oh, and then here we should look at the... Let's put this silly thing together. If you were collecting these toys for the awesome display of this jailbreak scene, uh, you will be disappointed because it's pretty junky. Which way does it go? I mean, it technically it works because it does stand up, but there's really it's super flimsy. There's not much to it. Uh, raw. It's, I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, I have one other one of these, but I I don't see myself assembling this into a scene anytime soon. Bye. And then to compare, here is Solomon Grundy from that same lineup. <laughs> right, I know you, it's just it's just the one wall. Similar issue with the weird little tiny head, although Solomon Grundy's a little bit more in proportion. But yeah, overall, I think they did a good job with these. Uh, this toy I got. Mm. I want to say I got this at a Target. They were around. They weren't too hard to find. Uh, and I think I got, I think I bought these when they were on, again, super sale, some clearance somewhere. I'm going to put his hand back. Oh. Hmm. There. I like the hand. So yeah, not bad. Pretty cool. So before this, it had been a while since there was a previous Clayface toy, but there's a very famous Clayface toy that I'm about to show you. Famous for a couple of different reasons. And this was back in, in Mattel's uh, DC Universe Classics line that was very, very popular. So they did a two pack. They did a two pack of Clayface that might be a little bit more familiar looking into people. Benjamin. Yeah, most people are more familiar with this one from the animated series. So this clay face definitely, definitely looks like poop. Uh, you can see, even without me showing you what it does, you can probably guess because you see the different colors in the plastic between his body and his arms. Body is plastic. Um, there's So there are different levels here. So the toy is hard plastic here on the inside where you can see the joints. Uh, you know, we're having some, we're having some issues with Benjamin and his, uh, his online classes. Thank God the year is almost over. This piece here is a softer rubbery plastic because it overlaps where the joint is. So you can see like this, this has some give to it. The head is hard plastic. But then these arms 
ugh, are rubber. With jiggly action. And there's a armature inside so you can bend and pose it. Now, <laughs> it's super gross, right? Now, it's not a bad idea. It's cool that you can bend them and do whatever you want. But in reality, like, yeah, it just, th this material is super gross. It gets all floppy. It The color is different. Yeah, I don't love it. And of course, he's got these stubby little poop legs. <laughs> it's just so much poop. Uh, there's even, like, the toe that looks like a little piece of corn. <laughs> and I think they, they made this so that like, you could stick something in there a little bit so you could be biting down on something. The sculpt is pretty... Is, it's not... Obviously, look, this is the sculpt as good as this one? Well, in places. But the head is pretty cool. And again, very very reminiscent of the uh, the cartoon. All right, Arsenal Roy, but don't jinx it. It 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 just dropped a little bit, but it's <laughs> yeah, emphasizing emphasizing the poop aspect. Now this figure is it, like I said, it it's fine. They they tried something. They tried with the with the posable arms. This one, it's got that cool webbing around the fingers. But as I mentioned, this came in a two pack. Now who does Clayface fight? Well, Clayface is a, is a Gotham City villain. He fights Batman. They had made a bunch of Batman figures in this line already, it's typically reusing the same mold, doing slight color changes. So what are you gonna do when you have a Batman that comes packed to fight Clayface. Well, you shit all over him. <laughs> so <laughs> this Batman is fondly referred to as like the poop covered Batman, toilet Batman. <laughs> so this Batman is is pretty famous <laughs> just for his uh his deco and they didn't even do a lot of it but uh but yeah it's uh it's kind of shitty <laughs> and i don't know maybe it's because it's because it's uh it is so little <laughs> like it's not completely splattered i don't maybe i guess that might be less bad. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And as I've said before, I'm I'm actually I'm not a huge Batman fan. So I love that of the relatively speaking of the few number or the small number of Batman toys I have, this is one of them. I proudly display my my poop covered Batman. <laughs> Somebody at Mattel thought this was a slam dunk. It does extend down over uh, one of his his boots there. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> So yeah, we've got poop covered Batman. We've got some clay faces. Now also it's interesting to note that <laughs> Yeah, so somebody Mattel is really into uh into scat. Uh interesting to note that technically in the line, this clay face is in scale with this Batman, while this clay face is in scale with that Batman. So of course, depending on how on how you envision your clay face, how big he is, you could switch it up. Like say you were, you know, if you were making a display, 
<laughs> you know, you could do something like that and have, you know, a tiny Batman going up against a giant Clayface or, you know, however you wanted to do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there are any figures that are inappropriately yellow. Probably. I mean, like I said, they've done Batman in every color, but like in standard, uh, standard outfits, just in different colors. I wonder if there is like a yellow sprayed character for some, some silly reason that they didn't realize was going to look like how it turned out. So these are my only two actual clay face action figures. There have been a couple other ones over the years, uh, other things related to the animated series. <laughs> oh, there have been lots of toys that are covered in like green slime and effects like that that you could definitely consider to be vomit in one way or another. I'm trying to remember. I had... I have something like that. I just, I can't, I don't see it from here, so I can't, and I can't remember what it was. <clears throat> anyway. So, yeah. Those are the clay faces for today. Now, I don't often bring them out because it, um, I have them all packed away so well, but I do want to make mention of Heroclix. Obviously, we have a couple of Heroclix fans who are watching. But if you're ever a fan, <laughs> I'll, I'll just leave Batman right there. <laughs> uh, if you, if you are a fan, even a casual fan of uh, characters from DC Comics, Marvel Comics, just about any of these movies or the cartoons, and but you're not like a real toy person, and you want a lot of toys around or large scale things like this. Heroclix is actually a great way to get some characters you like in just small versions that look cool that you can put on your desk or a shelf somewhere. So here are just a couple of a bunch of clay faces they made over the years. So this is Clayface from the Rebirth set. Uh, this was a super rare figure, but again, just like just a cool little version. Got one hand in a block, one hand in a kind of a spiked mace. Clayface for a while was a, a figure that was a little bit, they would put him at a little bit higher rarities. It's, it's switched over the years. Heroclix likes to pick certain characters and be like, that character is always going to be really hard to get. And for, for a little while, Clayface was like that. This was a, a prize. You had to play in a tournament Essentially, to be able to win this clay face, this one has uh, it's got some other stuff going on. So he's got like these crystal elements in him, and then some fire. But um, yeah, this one's a little bit more like like a poop man. Poop man clay face. Technically, ultimate clay face. But yeah, so like I said though. If you do like, say you were, so you're like, oh, I really like, I really like Solomon Grundy, but you know, I don't know where, I don't know where to start. How do I find a Solomon Grundy action figure? Like, well, I can point you to some really cool looking Solomon Grundy hero clicks that you might want to put around. That could be good. All right, um, I do have more Clayface uh, hero clicks, but they're even older, so they're way further down in the boxes, and I wasn't gonna dig through all of them. Uh, for today. <laughs> yeah, I guess at least they didn't do it on the face. I don't know. I mean, I guess I could do it myself. <laughs> Alright, everybody say goodbye to this Batman. I know he's all your favorite. He's the new uh, the new mascot for the channel. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, what's next? 
I was digging through what relatively few Star Wars action figures I have left that I haven't opened. Because again, it's been a it's been a while since I've actually bought one. But I found so we've talked about how <laughs> you bet I well I probably won't. Uh, Star Wars for decades and decades and decades. Their bread and butter were three and three quarter inch figures, right? They had some other, <coughs> they had some other scales and mainly kid stuff, but then a number of years ago they decided we we really want to get into the specialty collector market with six inch scale figures, which they unveiled as the Black series. It was now I know it sounds silly, but this was a huge deal in the action figure community. It did, it did pretty well. It continues to this day. And then for some reason... Star Wars, Hasbro. They did this stupid thing where they're like, oh, that's selling really well. So let's call everything the Black Series. If we do spaceships, let's call that Black Series. If we do other action figures and other scales, but we do like a premium deco on it, we'll call that Black Series. <coughs> Excuse me, and it just it diluted the name and the brand, and it was dumb. I don't I don't think they do that anymore. I'm not sure actually. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I've, allergies are picking up again, but I did at some point get a couple of these three and three quarter inch black series figures, and again. Hasbro, Star Wars, they've done every character you've ever seen on a, in a movie, uh, in a TV show, every background character. They all have names. They all have accessories. They all come in different versions. You name it, it's been done. So we have Clone Commander Doom. Um, and yes, this is like a goofy... It's Doctor Doom as a Clone Commander something. I don't know. And then again, like this bat, like what's what's going on with this package? Like the, all this empty space. Come on. Serving under Jedi Masters Tipli and Tiplar, this clone trooper commander leads his unit in an attack against Separatist forces in the Battle of Ringo Vinda. I have no idea if that's if any of those things are re are real things or if they just made that up for the toy. Uh, I have a lot of clone troopers, so when I saw this, I was like, oh, cool. Another clone commander for my army. And then... Darth Malgus. No, it's not Darth Vader, although it looks an awful lot like Darth Vader. It's Darth Malgus. He's got an old-timey lightsaber... In the time of the Old Republic, this Sith Lord is a powerful warrior in the Sith Empire during the Great Galactic War. Now, unfortunately, this package looks pretty good. This one is a bit chewed up, because uh, this one, this toy sells for like 50 or more bucks. So I, maybe I'll try to sell that one, because I don't really care. This one sells for a little bit less, and it's cool, so I'm going to open it up. Uh, oh, Patty, you don't know all your Sith Lords? You can't tell us the line of succession from Darth Bane, who instituted the rule of two? <laughs> That's fine. Look at this, I'm destroying value live on stream. They're going to lock me up with the hot tub streamers. <laughs> Have I ever heard a story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Oh man, so many good memes from that scene. Now again, in recent years, Hasbro has gone to, well, 
when they were still actively producing sort of standard three and three quarter inch figures, uh, they went back to the old timey versions, which were pretty much just five points of articulation. And again, on a three and three quarter inch figure that's just going to stand on your shelf next to a bunch of other dudes and ladies, I mean, it's fine. Like, at first glance, would you have known that this was only five points of articulation? No, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But that's how they sort of got away with making this Black Series distinct, unique, and more expensive, uh, is that it actually has a much more artic much more articulation. Uh, it co he comes with two blasters instead of one, so technically it has more, uh, more accessories. Uh, yes, Tiny Chris, there's... Uh, if you peruse the Twitch, if you're not familiar with this new phenomenon... Or I guess, I mean, some people are saying it's almost over. <clears throat> there are a number, number of uh, young ladies out there who stream on Twitch from their hot tubs. Very popular content. I have not attempted to do it myself. There's a um, there's a certain website that aggregates, it. so at any moment you can just go to that website and find out which uh, hot tub streamers are on. Patty, should you watch the Clone Wars series? My answer to you is uh, maybe. <laughs> I think it's really good, but it sort of just depends on if you were are you a, are you a big Star Wars fan? If you're a Star Wars fan, then. I'd recommend checking it out. I actually, I really like the 2D, as they call it, uh, the hand-drawn, well, the more traditionally drawn Clone Wars cartoon that came out first, that technically is not canon anymore, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it is on Disney Plus now. It just came out a few weeks ago. I'm actually watching that with my kids. It's a little too violent for them, but it's Star Wars, so... You know, it's not too extreme. I know, I gotta get I gotta get ahead of the trends. I'm always behind the trends. Uh, I have a million Star Wars action figures, but sadly they're still most of them are still in a big box. But um, just a couple other clone troopers I had at hand. Various different versions of our good buddy Rex. And this is a good example of the differences in how they do these. So this one here, five points of articulation. When you compare them, you can see, okay, well, this one kind of looks basic. His head's a little blocky. Uh, this one much more in proportion, obviously a lot more articulation. You can do cooler poses with him. <laughs> yeah, Patty, uh, for sure. I mean, it's, yeah. Oh, and, and there's a there's a there's a meme too with like a bunch of a few images from the cartoon, and it's like, yeah, the uh, Star Wars is for kids, and and yet it you know it covers genocide and torture and everything else. It yeah, it's. It, I mean, I I I like the show. I thought it was good. Ooh, if I was in a hot tub with toys, I could do that. So yeah, like I said, in a box, I have a ton of clone troopers and stormtroopers and everything else. But um, now I have you, Commander Doom. In no way related to Doctor Doom. That'd be funny if they had gone even further, like talked about how he fought on the... He fought battles in the Dominion of Latveria or something. Hello there. <laughs> Review toys in a hot tub? Oh, man. Funny story. When we moved into this house, uh, there was <coughs> there was an ab above-ground hot tub in the backyard. And the first thing we did when we moved in here, we were like, Get that thing out of here. <laughs> we have no desire for that. So we 
tore it out, sold it. <laughs> Get that out of here. Yeah, I've got. I, def I definitely have some toys that are technically designed to go in water and to do water things. Somewhere. Hmm. Uh, cool. So we got some got some clones there. Who's the best Transformer? Alright, I'll forgive you if you said Optimus Prime. Don't come at me with that Bumblebee garbage. I'm not hearing that. But clearly the best the best Transformer is Grimlock. This, of course, is the original Grimlock from the 80s. Uh... This is not my original Grimlock from the 80s. I lost it at some point. Uh, Rebought this one on eBay later, but this is an original. Uh, the stickers are better applied on this one than on mine, because I was always terrible at stickers, even as a kid. Uh, if you don't know the all of the history of Transformers, and even this one... Uh, it's based, it was actually, so the Transformers toy line came first, uh, and some of the toys even predate, they were toys before they were Transformers, from something called Diaclone, and Grimlock here was one of them, and that's why Grimlock, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, has a cockpit in his back. And this was because the old Diaclone line had little figures that could ride in the vehicles and in, you know, even some of the uh, dinosaurs. And those were, yeah, those were repurposed into G1 Transformers. Let that be a lesson to any of you who didn't know. So yeah, anyway, Grimlock. I love Grimlock. Great character. Uh, silly character at times. Yes, of course. Uh, they've done a lot of really cool stuff with Grimlocks in the comic books over the years. I can talk about this at length some other time. I have got a pretty big collection of Grimlock toys. Uh, I wasn't able to grab them all down for today, but maybe one day I will. Uh, Ruiner, we don't talk about those. <laughs> we don't. We don't talk about the Michael Bay movies. I have. I. I have a handful of toys from the Michael Bay movies. Most of them I got as review samples or they were given to me in one way or another. I, I, I didn't buy very many of those. Oh, actually, no. I bought a few of the ones that were um, NASCAR race cars because those were kind of cool. And I was watching NASCAR at the time, so those are neat. But, um, but no, those movies are trash, like straight up trash. Grimlock is an interesting character because at times he's really dumb. At times he just sounds dumb, even though he's not dumb. At times he's, uh, you know, an anarchist and wants to go off and do his own thing and doesn't fit into the chain of command. Sometimes he's a loyal, yes sir, Optimus Prime trooper. Uh, they've, they've done a lot of really different things with Grimlock over the years. So when the, the modern Robots in Disguise show came out, and they're like, okay, this is going to be a kid show, and it's only going to have five characters, essentially. Don't quote me on that. Uh, everyone was surprised when Grimlock was one of them. And he looked like this. Again, it was a kid show, so the designs were a little bit more clunky and car cartoony for, for a cartoon. So this is like the the littlest one. So he was he was green and black all of a sudden, uh, had like this big lower jaw kind of goofy thing. It's Grimlock though, so I picked up this little toy. They made a bunch of larger ones, but then now see again talking Hasbro here. Hasbro's smart. Hasbro knows when we make 
we make toys of this new version of Grimlock, some of the adults will buy it, right? Some of the some of the Grimlock collectors will buy this. But we're not going to get everybody to buy them. So how do we get how do we get all the collectors to come out buy our new Grimlock who looks a little bit silly and he's got these weird colors? Well, we'll kill two birds with one stone. Reuse that mold and paint him in the traditional colors and then Scott's got to buy one. So again, it's this more goofy looking version, but he's in G1 colors, essentially. I mean, obviously they didn't go all metallic, but uh, it's like, all right, now this will actually fit with all my other Grimlocks. <laughs> I like how they, they call it gold armor, but it there's nothing remotely gold about this figure. It's like a caramel color. Uh, all right, Savage Punch. I gotta tell you, I was born way back, technically I was born in the 70s, born in 1979, I am old, I watched G1 when it was just called Transformers, I never liked Beast Wars. This is a controversial take for many, many people who are younger than I am. Well, I know in, in this in this case, uh, my age is showing. Because yes, most people who are younger than me, either Beast Wars was the first Transformer show they watched, you know, live on TV, or it's the first one they really remember. And uh, I just, I don't, I, I don't have that nostalgia for it. I don't, I, tr I tried it. I was like, eh, I, I get, I get what it's doing. But after having watched the original, <laughs> oh, Patty, I have lots and lots of experience opening uh, toy packages and trying to keep the mess to a level where I can <laughs> put it away. Yeah, not, not a Beast Wars fan. And, you know what? I'll take it one step further. I liked Beast Machines more than Beast Wars. Yep, I said it. I said it. Patty, get up. <laughs> everyone, everyone is welcome. It's, it's all good. And again, the beauty of it is that toy companies, <coughs> toy companies will make toys referencing Beast Wars for all you youngins to get, and they'll make toys referencing old crap for old people like me to get. Toys for everyone, and this is this is similar to you know how I look at Green Lantern stuff. I am old enough that Hal Jordan you know, was my favorite Green Lantern growing up. There are distinct generations, plural, after me, who are like, who is Hal Jordan? Like, they don't even know him. Either they were reading the comics and they were into Kyle, or they were watching all the animated stuff and they were into John. It's like, that's, that's, that's all great. That's all fine. Stuff for everyone. There... The Beast Wars fan community is massive and very outspoken. <laughs> and they're constantly clamoring for more Beast Wars crap. Nineteen ninety seven, uh I was in college in nineteen ninety seven. <laughs> I was already out of high school. So yeah. Anyway. Uh we've got Grimlock here. I'm definitely going to keep this Grimlock in robot mode, but let's transform him, just see how it looks. Now this is a simple 10 step transformation, we'll see how easy it is. We flip up the head, oh that's kind of cool, just, just have the head on there. Ah, 
I'm old. Hey, look, it's. What are you gonna do? Um, flip. Man, I don't. Another way that I'm old. These. These instructions are printed very small, <laughs> and very lightly. Look at how washed out these images are. What is going on here? Give me an actual instruction sheet. Dang it. You're only as young as you taste. How does it go? I don't know what's happening here. It feels like there are supposed to be different. How does this separate? Come on. Oh, there we go. Hey, that side worked. Why doesn't this side work? Well, you know what the cool thing about my Transformers is? Like I said, usually when I get a Transformer, I, I can tell pretty quickly, is this a toy that I want to be in robot mode forever? Or a toy that I want to be in alternate mode forever? And if it comes in the mode that I want it, I don't even need to transform it. So beat it. Not transforming this guy. I know what this little one looks like. It's goofy. Anyway. So this will be my new... Man, these joints are... It's just floppy. Not great. Ooh, I, I do like... He's got a cool... Uh, point of articulation here in the neck so it can swivel from side to side. I do like that. Uh, so let's examine this as an action figure. It's got these big bulky shoulders, like a space marine, a couple points of articulation in there. These just like super basic joints in the arms. Obviously the arms turn into the legs so you can just Pack away the hands. Yeah, this is really flimsy. The, again, this this was a line that was primarily for kids. It's not a great toy, but uh, eh, it's okay. Like I said, next to next to all my other Grimlocks with all the same similar colors and general styles it'll be it'll be fine like i said one day i'll i'll bring out all my grimlocks that'll be fun to look through it's not made to last no yeah and it's very light <laughs> this plastic and you can tell like the arms the arms are hollow there's not much to the the legs there's uh yeah not not a ton of plastic went into this toy anyway This action figure, came, or this action figure, this transformer came with no accessories, no blasters or anything. But you'll note that even still, there is a shape within. Now he's got he's got these like claw hands, but you see the circle inside. Transformers have done this forever, so that's a standard. Uh, I think it is it eight millimeter. I forget the exact size, but um, basically, most transformer. Accessories are interchangeable in all in many of the toys over the years. So while this one didn't come with any, uh, he could hold stuff that came with other ones that you've got. And boy, do I have a lot of accessories that I can share with my toys, with and between my toys. Neat. Oh, the children. Yeah, one one day I'll... So across the room from where I'm sitting, I actually can... I can see my Transformer shelves, which are sparsely populated because I have a gigantic moving box on the floor 
It's still full of my old Transformers. One day. One day I'll take them all out. It's also right next to where all the Star Wars stuff is, which is in a similar, a similar sad state of affairs. Uh, and I say, Ghost, you know what? No. I I never did get any of the Masterpiece Transformers. Most of my toys aren't in that... You know, I don't have a lot of stuff in, like, a really big scale. And the cost of those was prohibitive enough that I'd rather go out and get a bunch of little tiny ones rather than spend that much on a big one. They are fantastic toys, and I was definitely tempted by... The Grimlock, um, the Hot Rod, or the Rodimus. But uh, no, I never actually did pull the trigger on any of those. I do have the... Uh, what was the... The original, the Japanese, before they became alternators here in the U.S. I'll show you those one day. Because <laughs> I have a couple of those. There are... They did a line of... Very, very complicated Transformers that turned into cars. What the heck was the name of that line? Shoot. I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, and they had a Grimlock that turned into a Mustang. And it's a... It's really cool. It is generally considered one of the hardest Transformers to, tra to actually transform. Um, so I had it. I have actually transformed it both ways... And I will never transform it again. Ever, ever, ever. Uh, cool, Patty. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Not the gay. One asks which toy is the LGBTQ one. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I mean, have any of the clay faces been... Have they ever addressed alternators? But, and I say, wasn't there another name... Was, was Alternators the Japanese name? The American name? Because I know there was a difference. I don't know. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I want to say that at least one of the clay faces was... Like, they, they actually at one point addressed the sexuality of one of the clay faces. That it was fluid. But, I don't know. Binaltech. That's it. That's That's right. Headmasters were the toys that act, that the heads were little tiny people that folded up to become the head that you plugged into the larger robot body. And in the old days, they actually had flip-out panels in the chest, and they had the stats. And each head sort of... I wish I had one in front of me, but uh, the little tiny figures... Behind that figure's head were these little, um, they were almost like little posts. So they would push in at different lengths to show the stats. It was a, it was a neat, very, very tiny, subtle gimmick. Uh, the famous jet fighter was Starscream, but there were a bunch of other ones as well. I have, I have some Starscream toys. I was never a huge Starscream fan. But they've made some really, really cool Starscream toys over the years. Yeah, I don't have very many Transformers left that I haven't opened. And like I said, it's, it's been a, a while since I've bought any new Transformers. But I have a bunch of old ones that we could look at that would be fun to, uh, to talk about. Yeah, and Transformers recently did a line that referenced the old Headmasters. Uh, these were called Titan... Titan somethings? I don't know. But yeah, there are new... New ones. Yeah, the Mustang Grimlock is... It's super cool. Like I said, impossible to transform. And there was like... There was a weird issue with its neck that if you did it even according to the directions, the neck wouldn't be right. So there was like a fix you had to go and figure out. It was just a nightmare. 
And I also I also have the shockwave in that line, and I got so frustrated with trying to transform that thing that I, I'm pretty sure I broke it, and I was like, I don't care, and I just threw it in a box, and I was like, I'm never going to attempt this again. Like, genuinely difficult toys to transform. And they're not supposed to be that difficult. So yeah, like I said, I'll uh, I'll try to I'll try to get to a point where I can pull out transformers to to show and talk about because that'd be that'd be cool. Even the old ones. All right. So what have we learned here today? We've learned that. Oh yeah, MX. Due to its notoriously finicky transformation, with many small steps that must be performed in exactly the right order, and to several pieces which have a tendency to pop off with relatively small amounts of force. Yep, that uh, that describes that describes that entire line, but very specifically that toy in particular. We learned that Batman is into uh, some some kinky stuff. He likes to get dirty. There are clay faces of all sizes and shapes to love. Batman sometimes gets a little blue on his face. Oh, and I, I don't know if I mentioned, but he does have the, the cloth cape. Oh, here's something for all you non-toy people. You ready for this? When a toy has fabric or even very flimsy rubber, do you know what they call it? There's a specific term they use in the industry for this. It's called soft goods. Soft goods. And it technically is like a different category of toy and there are different safety testing it has to go through because technically if this if there was some way for a kid to get this off and like actually pull it off uh, it would pose a different kind of choking hazard than a hard plastic cape yeah it's it's one of those one of those toy industry things Yes, soft goods. <laughs> so we got a Batman. We got a Clayface. We've got a Commander Doom. And our Grimlock. And then all the other things we looked at together with these. <laughs> yeah, just one of those... Uh, those bits of endless silly toy knowledge bouncing around in my head forever. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to oh, I'm going to throw that Darth Malgus up on eBay. Again, I'm going to have to do a I can't get top dollar for it because this package is scuffed. I mean, literally it's in toy collectors this this will be a big discount. It is the plastic is literally scuffed. And then, like, you see how the edges are chewed up, and there's a, oh, man, that's, like, that's going to be 10 bucks off right there. That's a bad one over there. I mean, this would be, like, barely worth more than an open one. That's all chewed up. What a bummer. Oh, well. I could use a couple bucks, so if I can sell it for, if I can sell it for even a little bit, that could be good. Cool. Well, this was a fun Toy Tuesday. I got a lot of My Little Pony stuff to open, so coming up, more My Little Pony content. I know not everybody loves it, but it's uh, it's good. Some really good My Little Pony toys out there. Uh, yes. Today. Tuesday, Dunes Day. Will we finish the book? We are so close. Like, literally, I think, what, do we have, like, 30, 30 pages left, maybe? Saturday. Oh, my, you're asking me about Saturday? That's, like, that's, like, weeks away. 
in my timeline. Uh, I don't have a guest lined up for this Saturday. Things have been crazy. But I don't know. Things could change as well. Uh, I do have some people that I've been talking to about coming on in the near future. So one of those might show up. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. No, no, no. There is somebody who talked about this coming Saturday. I'm going to say stay tuned and I'll have a, <laughs> I'll have a, an actual answer in the near future. But there might be a familiar face on Saturday. We shall see. And then I tentatively have guests lined up for the following two Saturdays. Um, which, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to keep that under my hat, though, for a little bit longer. Until I get some more clear, uh, confirmations. That's the word I'm looking for. Confirmations. All right, folks, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and just, just being awesome people, being fun to chat with and indulging my silly toy content. Um, let's see, who is online right now? What? What's happening? I don't know. I'm watching Endgame again. I've watched that movie too many times. It's just, it seems like it's an easy one to put on. I rewatched uh, Captain Marvel. Not my favorite, but that movie grows on me every time I watch it. I get it, and I'm certainly not, I don't hate that movie. I'm not one of those weirdos. I get that it's like, it's a different kind of story. Uh, definitely appeals to different segment of the audience, and that's cool. Like I said, I love it when there's different different parts of a fandom for different types of people. So yeah, uh, there is nobody on who is worth rating right now. <laughs> okay, uh, have a great day. Uh, Five p.m. Pacific. That's the, that's the time. <coughs> 5 p.m. Pacific, Jessica Nerdy, be there for possibly the end of Children of Dune. <coughs> as long as you people don't distract us too much. Yeah, and that's the awesome thing about the Marvel movies, too, is that you ask 10 different people to rate to uh, rate all their favorite Marvel movies, you'll get 10 different, 10 different lists. There are certain films in that series that most people would rank higher and most people would rank lower, but you're not going to get the same exact list out of, out of everybody, which I think is good. <coughs> and hey, I like Thor too. Like the number two. I like it a hell of a lot more than the first Captain America movie, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, we'll do, a, we'll do a hot takes on everybody's Marvel rankings another day winter soldier is pretty good that's a good movie okay so think about your marvel list we'll talk about that uh <laughs> on some upcoming stream okay everybody uh dune later jessica okay bye